I'm gonna up. I, Robert Campbell, Merchant of Sydney, the commission you, Captain Frederick Hasselborough, of the Brig Perseverance to certain islands on the coast in New Zealand or elsewhere for the purpose of procuring oil, seal skins, or other animals or substances, the produce of the seas or islands. Mr. Murray.
Hey folks, level up your project with May's free marketplace content. Beat the grind with an advanced RPG system and an endless runner creator. Branch out into new terrain with a stylized tropical environment and a realistic foliage pack. And then strike a final pose with help from over 600 animations, free until the end of the month. And make questing a breeze with the latest addition to our permanently free collection. Download them all on the marketplace today. Brains are what you'll need to defend yourself against a horde of hangry zombies in Night of the Dead. We caught up with Epic Mega Grant recipient and two-person team Jackdo Studios to learn more about their thrilling new multiplayer survival experience. Read the interview to learn more about their approach to fusing strategy, crafting, and survival. Are you ready to hone your animation skills? Then join us for the Unreal Online Learning and 11 Second Club 30 Day Character Animation Challenge. Your task, create an animated short using one of the 50 free and ready-made metahumans and you could win a Dell Precision Mobile Workstation, Unreal Engine swag, and other awesome prizes. Catch the full contest details on the feed. Have you ever wondered what goes into creating games as a service? In our interview, the teams at First Watch Games and High Res Studios dive into the design of maps, characters, modes, and more for the popular free-to-play team-based shooter Rogue Company, and offer tips on building a player-driven multiplayer experience. And now over to our rock stars of Answer Hub. Many thanks to our top weekly karma earners, Every Nun, Clockwork Ocean, Mad Turtle G Genin, Rough House Games, Luna Nellis, Ugmo, Kahel18, Mind Surfer Dev, Chur, and Sand Vampire. Over to this week's Spotlights, assume the role of an intrepid scavenger in the narrative-driven puzzle platformer Sky Beneath from Mindhaven Games. Embark on an adventure with your inventor friend Annie, take control of gravity and solve challenging puzzles in a mysterious sci-fi setting. You can wishlist Sky Beneath now on Steam. This absolutely gorgeous animated short was created by Han Yang to stress test the metahuman workflow. Make sure to visit their ArtStation page to learn more about their setup and follow along the development of their upcoming short film. And join a team of alien fleas in Flea Madness, a fast-paced game of maddening multiplayer melee mayhem. Choose your species, customize your abilities, and then hunt, eat, and squash your friends and frenemies in team play. Or flea for all, where there can only flee one. Releasing in November, you can wishlist the Epic Mega Grant recipient on Steam now. Thanks for watching this week's news and community spotlight. Hey everyone, and welcome to Inside Unreal, a weekly show where we learn, explore, and celebrate everything Unreal. I'm your host this week, Amanda Shade. Uh, not Victor Broden, he's unfortunately not feeling super great today, so please send him all the love and well wishes uh, on a speedy recovery. But the show must go on, and we're going to have a great time hanging out and talking about Quixel Mixer today. So our guests are Jonathan Holmes, the community support lead for Quixel. And Juan Paulo Mardones, the creative director at Leyenda. So, uh, Jonathan, you want to tell everyone a little about what you do here at Quick Quixel? <laughs> now I just said it. <laughs> Quixel slash Epic, otherwise known as Quepic. Yeah, thanks, Amanda. Uh, as you guys know, my name's Jonathan. I've been the community manager slash support lead for Quixel for quite a few uh, quite a few years now. Started back in late 2014 as a volunteer, moved up to a you know full time position, and then have been running things on the support side ever since, along with uh, the community aspect. So if you've ever interacted with Quixel's uh, public presence, you've probably talked to me at some point in the past. Um, I'm usually one of the most responsive people in the company. If you ever need something, just write to me, and I'll I'll try to see what I can do to help you out. Um, yeah, and hey Juan, let's see what you got too, buddy. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm uh, Juan Pablo Mardones, and um, I'm uh, the CEO and, and founder of Leyenda Producciones, which is a company located in Santiago, Chile. I, I'm doing a lot of things, wearing a lot of hats, uh, modeling, lighting, texturing, and also directing. Um, Quixel has become a major tool for me and very important part of my life. So I'm really glad to be here to be sharing with the community. 
Awesome. Well, thank you both for joining us. So before we dive in, we have, uh, for those of you that may not be as familiar with uh, Mixer, we have a little video that should give you an overview of the product. I think we're having some technical difficulties here on Amanda's side. So let's give her a moment or two to reconnect. But in the meantime, that was a pretty cool video, man. Um, while we wait, I just wanted to say that Mixer has made such a massive improvement over the, uh, over the course of its development. It went from being a, essentially a surface generating tool into a full texturing suite that you can make entire models in now. Um, it's it's phenomenal how much improvement has been done to it and the uh, the amount of time we've been developing it but it's uh it's still a work in progress so we're definitely doing what we can to continue improving it uh i, I can see that we are all talking in chat so you know we'll get to you guys as soon as we can we do plan to have a q a session towards the end um but yeah like i said <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna try to kind of add lib some of this while we wait for amanda to come back Sometimes uh, internet is a little strange. I think she's at HQ here with us and it's a little cloudy outside. So we might've had a power outage nearby that might've caused some problems. But uh, yeah. Hey Juan, why don't you go ahead and uh, get started on your demo, bud? Okay. Um, first, I'm, I'm going to tell a bit about the, the story of uh, how I got involved with Mixer. Um, I started using the software in 2019 when it was only a 2D uh, generation, uh, surface generation software. And uh, well, the first thing I did was, of course, uh, mud with water. And uh, that was, I guess, what everyone did the first time. And then I started creating terrains because uh, I thought if I change the scale, uh, the scale is relative to, to one's position. So if I just change the scale and, and I start creating uh, terrains inside Mixer, Maybe I can play with uh, with images in, in my mind that I have always dreamed about creating. So I started publishing this. And this was the first time, as a matter of fact, that I was publishing something in, inside the Facebook group. Um, and uh, people got in, interested uh, in, in this type of work because the, it was pretty much I was showing the a snapshot from Mixer, like a so, sort of rendering inside Mixer, uh, not rendering outside, and showing how Mixer and using the mega scans, uh, materials and surfaces could be used for several types of things, uh, from uh, this, uh, landscapes and whatnot. In this case, I'm I'm creating a Mars landscape uh, with Mixer. So I kind of became a bit known inside the community for doing weird stuff. Uh, I created the the I don't know the Quixel. Um, base in the Arctic and uh, whatnot, and uh, also started creating uh, even cars inside Mixer. It was not a 3D software, but I was doing this inside Mixer, just with a subtraction, addition, and, and some shapes. So it, I really became uh, very familiar with the software. And one, one of the things that uh, struck me the most, it's, it was so easy to learn. And, and being easy, uh, it was so inviting. So I, I became absolutely nuts with the software. 
started posting tutorials in 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 the in the foot in the group in in facebook and uh, I, I think i posted 50 tutorials in in a span of uh, two months and after that i i was invited to the to become a beta tester for the for mixel when when the plan was to create a, a software that painted 3d models and of course i accepted it because it was a huge honor and uh, we started working with a with a one texture set uh, version of mixer um, and that's it's been two years right jonathan you were the first one to pick me up yeah uh, i don't want to get into the details of that but um <laughs> You know, back in my my former life, when we were just Quixel, not part of Epic, um, I wasn't you know part of the sales team, and uh, it was it was great to be able to bring you guys on board. Um, you've you've been amazing with this tool, man. I mean, there are people who are passionate about Mixer, and then there are people like you. Well, no, rather, there's a person like you who is you yourself, who is just you bring the term fanatic to a different level entirely. Um, you are very unique and very talented, and the work that you do with this tool is mind blowing. I mean, it's incredible that, that somebody has like, not, I need to stop saying that, that you <laughs> have taken this tool and like you, you continue to push us in its development to new levels and heights. Um, I mean, Juan, dude, thanks for, for doing what you do, man. And it's really great to have you on the stream demoing the work that you've done with it. Okay, man. Thank you. Um, well, uh, let's move. Uh, let's move forward. Um, the thing is, I've been developing a thing with me, things with Mixer for a long time, and uh, I want to share a few things that uh, may be interesting for the for the for the audience. Uh, I created um, with it with my team a short last year for the McInnes uh, challenge, and uh, the challenge had like one month to create everything uh, and and we had to use we have to use some some assets from from the mcginnis uh, he gave some assets a soldier and um, and some houses and whatnot so that was the first of the perfect opportunity to start uh, reskinning things so for instance this was the asset that he gave us and i start adding dirt to the soldiers and then the face adding dirt to the faces and and, and trying things inside mixture um and then I've finally I even painted the IDs to change the colors inside Mixer. So finally, what I did was I pretty much changed everything. I I I, I added a new helmet, glasses, uh, changed it, ev everything. I added, changed it completely. The weapon, uh, texture of the weapon inside Mixer um, was a pretty cool experience and and pretty good learning experience. As I was able to share this with the community. And the community and, and also showing in videos uh, what i was doing and what i was learning so finally in in the end uh, we created this short i'm, I'm just going to highlight some some parts of this because the the most interesting thing is that we had no experience with a with a unreal engine this was the first time we were doing something in unreal engine i only had some experience in in, in mixer i felt confident with that but uh, we aimed for very high for final pixel in Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine. This is the CG shots are completely final pixel. Um, so um, the work was uh, really, really stressing because we didn't know what we were doing. We 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 had to learn how to import uh, animation, and, and the most terrible thing was the the all the shot that was made uh, by my friend uh, Dylan. Um, uh, he was not able to make the the vibe work so so finally we had to track f five minutes of the of a camera by hand and that was super super st stressful i i would say that the unreal engine part was so enjoyable and uh, we finally rendered the the short in like like one day uh because the render was so fast now with the with the with the new render queue we want to go back and render this again because we know we can we can do a better job uh now that we th that there's a new tool set to render this so i'm just gonna show a little part where the scorpion is or the character of the scorpion this guy is like he's reduced or he's shrinked into a sort of alternate reality and he realizes that he's no longer uh big like he, he's small so he is in front of the school bones and everything so the thing is i textured 
the bird, the, the fly, and this guy that is coming here. So a uh, pretty challenging uh, project that we made. Um, How beneficial do you feel like, this is a little aside from Mixer explicitly, but you know, participating in contests and things like that. You know, periodically we we run game jams and stuff for folks to try out new skills. Do you think something like these kinds of shorts are invaluable in, in kind of picking up and just running with new tools and um, platforms? Yes, I I think doing uh, working in uh, or or trying to participate in contests is is absolutely uh, the best way to learn because it having a deadline. Uh, a gun pointing to your head is is one of the best things to stress you or to get you out of your comfort zone. So, um, at least for us, for this particular project, uh, it was one month. Okay, we 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 made it very long. So, but that's that's our fault. If I guess <laughs> uh, uh, we learned so much with it, and and we tested Mixer uh, very very extensively with it. So uh, after that, uh, I started working with a with a game company called Nam uh, Sunspear Games with a game Immortal, which is also made in Unreal Engine. But um, I was um, in, I, I'm in charge of the game cinematics with my company Leyenda, and uh, I started working with a, in the first uh, cinematic for them and uh, this was in 2020 so mixer was not able to work with the uh, multiple texture sets yet and i was able to create this character uh, but with 30 mixes so so i was texturing part by part with smart materials importing and especially i was modeling one part creating a smart material and then importing the rest of the parts of the, of the bronze parts and just applying a smart material. So, so I would say that the modeling and the prepping was the, the, the time, uh, the most, the, the longest time I have to work on this, but texturing, uh, I did it like super fast because uh, I was able to recycle my, my bronze and my sort of battle damage in, in very easily. Uh, so, so I could create this character um, with the, its trained 30 parts uh, from scratch. Now, the, the next uh, cinematic we're going to create for Immortal uh, is going to be 100% uh, mixer like this one, but also it's going to be rendered in Unreal Engine like, like the short I just showed you guys. Some questions? Or shall I continue? Sure. Um, they're actually wondering, like, they love all the stuff you're showing off. Is the your art station the best place to check out a lot of the work that you've been been doing? Yes. Yes. Any other? Yes. No, not not yet. I'm a boomer, so so I don't <laughs> use I don't use uh, uh, <laughs> social media. <laughs> My wife is always barking at me because I don't use social media. It's uh, I'm. I don't know. Uh, I need. I, I need to start doing it. Um, but the thing is, I've been concentrated on the work uh, so much uh, in, in in especially in Mixer and and with my company that I'm I'm not really out there like showing off uh, outside the the channels, uh, outside the Facebook and and outside this particular channel. So I I guess this uh, this stream is going to to give us a bit of a exposure and my my. My biggest interest is uh, is that people uh, try Mixer and, and and the adoption of the software because the software is first is free uh, and this is one of the most important things. Uh, the 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 Megascans ecosystem is free. Uh, the the Unreal Engine ecosystem it, they are interconnected really well. Uh, the the ecosystem uh, covers everything from Mixer, Bridge, and uh, and then to Unreal. So being free and also being easy to use uh, and also fun, which is the, the most, uh, I think the most important part for me was that this software had what I call a zero, uh, a zero learning curve, which is something that is not usual that you sit in front of a software and you can start doing cool stuff in one day. Uh, these uh, things that I, I, I was showing you guys, uh, this was my second mix. My first one was the puddle with mud, and the second was this. So 
um, like in, in one week I was doing this, or two weeks I was doing things like this. Uh, so so when, when a software is, is out of the way, it, it's not a barrier for you to learn, your creativity explodes. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm so, um, I'm, I'm such a fanatic and, or, or a fanboy with a mixer. It's because it, it really sort of cleared my mind and allowed me to do something I really wanted to do. I always wanted to do surfacing and texturing, but, uh, but I didn't want to learn any software. But I felt like, oh man, I'm I'm over forty at this point. I don't want. Uh, it's hard, and and that was a story I was telling. I I, I was telling this story to myself. You can't learn this because you're you're over forty. It's, it's a stupid thing. But uh, I was doing that. But I when I faced Mixer, it was like I can learn anything because this thing is showing me that this is easy. It's super well thought. The UI and the UX, uh, they are great. Uh, and there's a lot of effort that the, the Quixel people and, and, and the dev team uh, put into simplifying things uh, to make make it work under under the hood. So I would like to go and show you this character uh, that uh, this was the sort of uh, biggest uh, character I developed for the mixer tool. Because I, we were testing the multiple texture support uh, uh, for this particular feature or release, right? So in this char character, I had to. I, I was testing the gloves, which were one texture set, the helmet, which had four texture sets, the shoes or the boots, which had three, and the suit, which had nine, and the backpack had five. So of course, this sums uh, twenty-two texture sets. It's a lot. I didn't want to make my computer explode uh, because you, you must realize that uh, you, you're working with scan data here so so it, it's still there's a lot of uh, textures uh, lo being loaded in in your gpu so i i have a rtx 2080 ti uh, but i was aware that I, I i didn't want to strangle my system so i worked in parts hey juan mm -hmm. uh two things did how many texture sets did you say that was 22 in Good total. Lord. That's, a, that's incredible. And it ran pretty fluidly too, huh? But the, I'm going to show you guys the the suit, which has nine. And uh, well, this is a, the renders I made. Um, and something very important here is that the, and it is a tip. Because uh, when, when you're setting up your character, you may want to start improvising in, in Mixer and, and you, you may want to drop a lot of uh, un, uh, of the smart materials in there, but you you will you will clog your 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 graphics card and you, and you will make your computer explode. And that would happen if you drop a lot of textures, whatever. So the thing is, I, I what I did here is I planned my texturing in, inside my DCC, which was Maya in this case. I, I decided, okay, this is the color pattern I'm going to wor work with. Then I created my my textures, I my texture sets in this case, the, the the IDs and everything in my inside Maya, and then I went into Maya. After I text, this is a file I'm going to show you. I'm going to tumble around a bit, and and then I'm going to do something uh, really special. I'm going to texture something from scratch. So the cool thing is you can version your characters in Mixer, having a great time. Um, this is uh, this is the fun part when when you see your character going from from this which okay this looks okay the colors are good when you see your character and and, and the details uh, come to life uh, the, the scratches and everything um, being photoreal and and your effort uh, or your effort feel effortless um, it the <laughs> you feel so happy so so well. This was the character I, I was uh, I showcased as as a battle stress test for the software, and uh, the character is right here. We have the mixer um, UI here. You can see I'm going to explain this uh, a bit better uh, while I'm doing the complete sort of uh, workflow with a, with one small robot. But um, this guy has all these um, things called texture sets. Um, and these, are, sorry, these are the layer sets, and these on the other side are the texture sets. So this guy has 
nine texture sets and all these are layer sets. And this is the model. Um, then I exported this to my friend here, Bridge. This is the model exported into Bridge. And with one click, you export this into Unreal Engine. So you have here a scene where I, I've been compiling in the last two days the models uh, that I've been working with Mixer to test and prove that the, the, the exporter works really nice. So in here, you have uh, the complete model. I can tumble around and, and do whatever. And also, since uh, the Mixer exports a material which is compatible with their or standardized, you kind of get uh, the same type of material that you get with uh, what, uh, any Megascans uh, asset. So if you're accustomed to modifying Megascans assets or Megascans textures, you can do that as well here. Bro, those uh, those critters look like something out of Stephen King's The Mist. <laughs> yeah, the, this one is a uh, reskin, um, and also uh, remember the scorpion of the short. Yesterday, I was thinking, hey, I should reskin the the scorpion uh, with a with a sort of cyber <laughs> cybernetic look or something like that, and export it to show uh, how how it looks in inside uh, Unreal. So here it is. Yeah, he looks great. So the thing is, um, not only for for environment, you can do your character, you can create your characters. Uh, so what I want to do now, guys, is um, well, since I showed that everything is is looking good here, I want to reskin this guy uh, inside Mixer, and I, I guess people will want to ask questions. So I'm going to clean up the scene first. So I'm going to tell him I want a new mix. And While you're doing that, I did have a question earlier that I wanted to address. Um, yes, tell me. We, we get a, a frequent amount of questions regarding this. Um, uh, the subject is usually whether or not Mixer is going to support baking. Uh, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with baking, texture baking, it's when you take a high poly model, project that to a low poly model for use within game engines. Um, currently, we don't have plans to do this. We all know that you know we're very aware that you guys want this. It's uh, something we'd like to add if we can. But right now, we're focused on other problems that we think that could be a little bit more important. Um, there's plenty of free alternatives out there for texture baking, and we would recommend that you use them uh, if you'd like to work with Mixer. Uh, one of those would be XNormal off the top of my head. It's completely free and it's still very much used in the industry. Um, other paid solutions would be something like uh, Toolbag 4, for example, or Toolbag 3. Uh, those work pretty well, too. Uh, but if you want to stick with entirely free, uh, XNormal is pretty much the way to go. Yes, there, there's uh, there's solutions for baking. Uh, you, you can do it also in, in Blender. Um, I use uh, Marmoset Toolbag because it, it's GPU-based, so I'm very impatient. So. <laughs> I, I need to do that fast. Um, but yeah, um, there's tools to do that. Uh, and once you have your model uh, and, and you have your bakes, uh, OK, so I clean it up. And I'm going to open now. I'm going to open this inside Unreal. And I'm going to show you guys very quickly the something that is going this is going to be fast but uh, it's not the robot i think this is something that people forget it's the reskin uh, of a megascans asset uh, this is one of the one of the very powerful things you can do um, if you have for instance rocks uh, rocks you have hundreds of rocks inside megascans but you can uh, reskin your rocks uh, in a way that Maybe, maybe you can create a st stylized look or change completely the, the environment. So I prepared a little scene. Uh, I think there's a, also a free scene in the sample in the sample pack where, where they did something. Uh, but I prepared one for you to see. Uh, I'm not going to export it, but uh, this, this is the asset. It's called Granite Rock 2 by 2. And if you see this, you, you, maybe you want to change the the textures, right? So this is the result uh, of the textures after I changed them. So how I did this? First, I um, added a solid 
with a mask just to enhance the, the, the edges. Then this guy, which is in multiply. So I get a bit more crevices. And then some moss using uh, probably a normal. I guess the normal is what I used. And then just the last layer with a bit of normal in a different direction. And finally, I get a completely different look. Um, and you can export this to, to the library and then to Unreal Engine. So this is one of the uses that uh, I guess people forget that they can do this. Uh, it's super easy to do it. Uh, and you can do it with absolutely everything inside uh, uh, the Megascans library. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we should also have some content on our YouTube channel that demonstrates how to take existing 3D assets from the Megascans library and give them the uh, re retexturing job treatment. Uh, including stylization too. I think we have a tutorial or something similar to the effect from Jack McKelvey that you guys would totally be interested in. Yes, you can you can stylize the the, the textures, uh, the same textures that Mixer have, or uh, create your own in, inside Mixer. Um, I made a, a stream with you, Jonathan, last year, I think, uh, where I covered a, a lot of uh, ground with a uh, with stylization. Uh, oh yes. So, so it, it's something that is it's very recurrent, and, and people are asking all the time about it. So now we're loading this little guy, um, this guy. He's going to come with uh, some textures, I guess. Um, so I'm going to show you. I'm going to delete them. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I texture it using uh, the prepared bakes or materials that they're, they're not materials they're the bakes that are already loaded and also the the ids so this is our our character or robot it has two udims so i'm gonna clean up the scene and start from scratch i can't delete a texture set so i'm gonna say for instance empty or just Yes. Are you going to so show this... an awesome smart material? Yes. Ooh. Can of course. See that. Of course. So, okay. Let's go with a with a setup first. Um, I already imported my 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 base maps, but I want to say something that is really important regarding the UI, and and the U, finally the, the the UX in Mixer. Mixer is divided in a sort of three stage workflow. Uh, and this has to do with how the interface is laid out. The first thing you do is set up. And what, setting, setting up a scene, meaning loading your geometry and loading your base maps. And once you're done, you close. And that means you're not longer worried about your setup. So that means that the interface is not showing you everything you can do all the time. Then you have, you, you have your texturing space, which is this one. You have your layer sets and your layers. I'm going to work in those in a minute. And once we're ready, you have your export tab where you have the options to export. So Mixer is one, two, three. Set up, texture, export. And that's why the interface is so clean and so easy to use. OK, so in this case, um, I'm going to work with this model. Uh, I have, as I told you, there's two. This is a UDIM model, as a matter of fact. It has two UDIMs. And I'm going to just drop one uh, solid, which is the basic, the most basic uh, texture inside or, or material inside uh, Quixel Mixer. And look at this. This texture set at this point is targeting only one UDIM or one texture uh, te target texture set. So now I'm going to target both of them. And I'm going to change this a bit. The roughness is going to be tighter so it's like a bit of a plastic and this is the first thing you may do or you may want to see and wow this is your model as you exported it from your dcc with the bakes now you want to do something cool with it right okay so what we're going to do is i'm going to say this is the head and the head is 1001 and i'm going to create a new layer set which is legs it's going to be legs and just for the sake of it i'm going to create a different color 
legs is 1002. So now I know that where are my, my, my objects, right? And also I can look at them here. This is a very nice way to focus on things. For instance, I'm going to hide the second UDIM so I can concentrate on the head, or I can do exactly the opposite and concentrate on the only, the, only on the legs. And also we have this sort of uh, telescopic sight where you, uh, you can uh, concentrate on the texture sets themselves. In, the, in this case, I'm concentrate on, concentrating on the legs, as you can see, if I press this one. And if I click the, the layer set targeting the head, I'm going to be concentrating on this one. So I'm going to leave it <clears throat> as it is now. And in the head, I'm going to go to the library. And I'm going to search for a smart material. Old. Old dusty thermal plastic is very good. Smart material. Check this out, guys. 434 smart materials. I think I made around 30 for the pilot. Uh, 30 custom uh, materials myself, but uh, but Quixel already already provided almost 400 smart materials. Smart materials are a sort of master class of mixer uh, themselves. Uh, once you load them, you will see how the system uh, works. I'm gonna search for the dusty plastic material. Old, I'm going to put, put Dusty here. Dusty PVC green. Let's try this. Now Mixer is loading. It's loading a sort of mix uh, itself. It, it has a, a lot of uh, textures from the Megascans library. And also each one has a mask stack. Yeah, that's that's because each one of these smart materials was made by hand uh, in house um, by a team of artists that we've uh, kind of tasked on working on that. So they're some of the best materials you can get out there, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, speaking personally, uh, the the amount of dedication these guys put into making these things look fantastic is like, pardon the pun, but it's just unreal. I mean, I love it. Look at this. I'm gonna change the the color of the legs because I'm I I think I'm ruining the this. Yeah, they don't the... quite match, do they? <laughs> yes, because they don't match. <laughs> so, so this is a smart material as it comes. Uh, this dusty PVC plastic green, and uh, I need something for the eyes. So I'm just going to go and uh, go shopping to the uh, library, and I'm gonna put scratched. And this could be a, an option: a scratched plastic. So I'm going to use IDs for this to mask because the mixer. One thing that mixer is is a super masker. So we are going to use masks uh, and IDs to isolate and show how we can uh, attach or assign materials to certain parts in this model. Okay, now everything is going to become black, right? So. I have this smart material, and I'm going to add an ID with the, with the letter I or pressing here. And with Q and pressing here, I assign this to the eyes. And that was pretty, pretty simple. Now I'm going to play around with a, I'm going to add a few smart materials to the legs. I'm going to select this solid, going to the smart materials, and I'm going to create, I'm going to go for pilot. And I'm going to add one of my favorite smart materials, which I made myself. And uh, I love it because it uses only one source. Um, Quixel uh, smart materials, they are way more complex. They have, uh, I don't know, usually six or seven sources. And with this particular one, I was trying to do something with just one source, only one texture, and the rest should be procedural. And as you can see here, uh, this is the result. 
there's a sort of a volume between the paint and the metal. I can completely change that if I want to. I'm going to select this guy, which is the paint, and I'm going to touch the height a bit. Or even say one, so that the paint is completely flat on the surface. So let's play around a bit with a with a with the head. What we can do with the head. All right. So first, we should figure out uh, what's happening here and what we can do. So to do that, what I usually do is deactivate all the layers until I see what's in the base. And in the base, I have this plastic. And as you can see, this is a scanned plastic. You can see that this plastic has some roughness mapped directly to the plastic. And the first thing I can, I can check with this is how it is applied to the model. This is applied with using a box projection. And uh, if I change this slider on the right, I can change the orientation or uh, the scale of it if I want to. For instance, if I want these uh, little scratches to be more to be smaller, I'm going to change this to 0.5, and they are going to repeat a bit more. Now, I think this, if if I want to create something like a sort of uh, camouflaged uh, robot, this color will not be cutting it. So I'm going to change it. I think that really depends on your environment. What's he's course. a sea bot? Of course. As a matter of fact, that reminds me. That reminds me uh, when I uh, I told the the Quixel team that I was going to develop a, a Mars camouflage. Uh, Victor Oman said something like, "Yeah, for Mars for Mars forests." <laughs> <laughs> so it was it. no no uh, Victor. Um, how do you know? I I go to Mars every day. I, I created this one for sort of Mars uh, environment. But okay, let's go back to the the robot. Okay, we have we have a green here. Let's leave it at that. And I'm going to change also the roughness of this material. So this is to prove you guys that uh, you don't need to stick to the smart materials as they come. You can you can use them um, exactly as you as you want. So let's yeah, see. They, now. they make a really good base to work from too. Um, in a lot of ways, I would recommend doing that. Juan, sorry to interrupt you on that one. It's just uh, smart materials should be used as a base. I mean, you can you can use them as is, obviously, but to get the most out of them. Um, it's probably recommended that you kind of deep dive into all the different mixer settings and um, adjustments that you can make to really personalize them and, and make them your own. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, all the materials I used for my pilot were started uh, as uh, smart materials from the library. Also, the, the, the character from the Immortal game. Um, I usually don't start from scratch. The, the only material I started from scratch is the, the one I have on the legs because I, I wanted to challenge myself. But uh, the smart materials are so invaluable that and, and, and you can learn so much from them because if you, if you go here, for instance, in the, in, in the edge where you will, see, if you press nine, you will see how the, the, the mask is being, is being affected here. So I'm going to turn off uh, all the things here, and you have edges in this case. And this is using the default curvature that Mixer calculates. So I'm going to change it to, I'm going to change this to from underlying mix to base curvature map. So now it's going to be using this. Now it's breaking something with the texture, which is being projected, and then adding some details, and then a gradient remap, which acts like a sort of levels. So if I push the curve, I'm going to see how the mask looks in a moment. If I press 2, I'm going to go into Albedo. And since the color of this edgeware is so close to this one, we can't really see the difference. And also, it's set to overlay. So I'm going to change this. And now you will start seeing the results. I'm going to apply it. Go to um, PBR metalness mode, and I can see now the result. Now let's check the scratches. What are they? Oh, those are great. These are affecting uh, pretty much the roughness of the model. So I'm going to leave them as they are. 
And I think this guy should be a bit darker. Something like this. And then we have dust. And this dust, very cool. We are going to check the mask that generates the dust. Pressing 9 again. We can check in how it's made. So we have first these cavities, which are being uh, read from the from the complete mix. And uh, we had some top normals. These ones are being added. Then the mask is broken, projected. And we have some detailed mask. So I think I'm going to make some changes in the break. I'm going to change the frequency of this. I change it a bit so I have a bit more dirt on top of this guy and if we want the dirt to be really popping um, maybe we should make the robot darker you could even add a little bit of normal depth to it too so it pops right off yes let me check the normals how how they are at this moment so I'm gonna select the dust surface I think uh, I think it was not a very good idea to to change the octaves or the frequency. Yeah, this is this is better. And uh, let me see. We have the displacement and the normals. So if I turn off the displacement, nothing happens because the model is has not displacement activated. And if I deactivate the normals, you will see on top of the head here. I'm going to get closer so you can see it. I'm going to activate the normals again. You can see the normals uh, acting on top of this. So maybe we can uh, force them a bit. So strength, what happens if I push two? So normals are going to be a bit uh, a bit stronger. Like what if, some... what if you were to take the displacement channel and drive that a little higher so that the entire uh, dirt layer kind of popped off, including where the mask is? It's at already at two. Uh, I think what what I'm going to do is uh, <clears throat> I'm going to add some uh, a posterized uh, node, which is is a node that is criminal. Uh, but if you put this in, in two or three steps and reduce the opacity, you get the, a more natural look with this. So. What else can we do? So we have a dirt uh, layer in here, and this dirt layer is very, very subtle. So I'm going to check why. Yes, as you can see, the, the object looks pretty black. So that means uh, no, the mask is not allowing any pretty much anything to go through. So we are going to check why. First, we can check if the opacity is in 1. And then we can check why this is so dark. So I'm going to turn off everything. So we have a dirt mask. If I turn it on, you will see immediately the result. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it on. So how this thing is built, um, we have this texture, which is broken by a noise. OK. Uh, this is in multiply. Maybe we can say no overlay, right? And then top normals. Top normals are in multiply, so they are sort of subtracting and then cavities. And what I want to do here is I'm going to create a thing called position gradient. This is what I wanted. And I'm going to set this one to overlay. So I'm going to push black a bit. So all this uh, event is pretty much happening on top. So I can turn my dust now, and I have all my dirt accumulated on top of the model, as you can see here. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> OK, so magic. yeah, it, the thing is, it, it's easy once you understand the, understand the basics of, uh, of uh, smart materials. 
we can try a different one from the local library. Uh, I'm going to check with uh, this one, the pilot camo chip metal, which is one of mine also. It's going to take a moment to load. So while we're waiting for that to load, uh, we, we have gotten a couple questions uh, about the same topic being, can we import materials made in other software to Mixer? And the answer is absolutely yes, but it, you can't bring in smart materials authored in other programs because the, uh, the, the best way to describe it is they're not going to be talking the same language. So you'd have to eyeball them in Mixer to recreate them. But the base texture maps that you can export from other tools can be brought into Mixer and you can work with them and you can export them from Mixer. Uh, anywhere you pretty much want to take them to. Yeah, that's right. Um, you should. Uh, the other thing that you can do is uh, it's something that I usually do a lot. Is I'm on the hunt uh, all the time for things that uh, I I may need uh, or I may find in uh, ArtStation. Uh, ArtStation has a great marketplace, and you can find a lot of. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Let's give it a moment to load. I think he failed. <laughs> no active subscription. Mixer is telling me we don't know you. Sounds like a glitch in the matrix. How yeah, could they we're... not know you? Yeah, no, you, you're, you're not with us. Go away. So I say, OK. I hope he recovers from this one. And uh, well, I, I use a lot of alphas uh, generated in, uh, I don't know, in ZBrush or... Uh, because you, you don't have to create everything on your own. Um, I, I'm also always on the hunt for, for, uh, for models, for kit bushes. Um, in this case, this model is completely done by, by, by me, but, uh, but the, you see, Mixer, Mixer loaded. So we are going to fix this in a moment. Uh, you you can work with a with a lot of uh, alpha channels and uh, alf alphas and and also repeat them. So this looks a bit better than I what what the thing I had. So I'm going to I'm going to delete the dusty uh, thing that we were doing earlier, and I'm going to do something really interesting. This smart material has two folders in in it. The, it has the camo and it has the weathering. But the problem is the weathering, which I'm going to turn off now, is not affecting all the model. I want the weathering to affect all the modeling. So what I'm going to do is having this uh, layer selected or this folder selected, I'm going to move this layer set to, I need a new layer set. And this one is going to be called weather. OK, so the weathering is going to go to weather. And I'm going to make it affect both target texture sets. Let's give it a moment and figure out what is going on with this, this little alert that we have here. Probably one texture uh, is not uh, being connected. Yes, so that was a bad idea. I'm going to move it back. They're stressing out because you haven't saved. <laughs> yeah, probably. You like to live dangerous, don't you, Juan? <laughs> OK. You got to ride that anxiety high. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to check what is being missed, missing here, this one, detail mask. I think I deleted something by accident and I broke it. Not totally my fault. We just so got a question about the max res that uh, Mixer supports for textures, and that would be 8192 or 8K, but it's highly recommended that you work in 4K max currently. Yes. Uh, I usually work in, in 2K um, because you, you have the best response in, in 2K. Uh, in the previous version, I worked in 4K, but that was only when, when you were working on flat surfaces but in this case uh, in this case now um, I prefer to work in in 2k and 
only when when I'm about to export, uh, I I change things to to 4K. Now, if I'm working on Unreal Engine, uh, then I try to export the the textures in 2K because I don't want to destroy the the graphics card. So and okay, so now I, I replicated the the um, camel, the Swedish camel, the M90 camel. <laughs> Splinter camouflage. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of love I kind of love this camel, so that's why I I, I made it. Uh, Mixer has it, its own uh, own camel based on on, on geometry on, on a very simple geometry, but I, I kind of like this one, maybe because I, I made it. Um, so now we are going to add some dirt to this. So I'm going to just add a solid on top of everything. And I'm going to add, I think we should do this on, on top of everything here on the weather, as I was trying to show you guys earlier. OK, so this is the weathering is targeting both texture sets. So let me see. Head is one. This one is two. Somehow it's giving me a little issue here, but I'm going to fix it in a second. Ah, all right. I know what. Do you know what it was? Yeah, I was putting everything inside the ice. <laughs> and the ice are maxed, so that's why. So I'm going to add a bit of dirt on top of this. And, and to do that, I'm going to create a position gradient uh, and work my way out in mask mode. So I have this. And then I'm going to add a texture map. And it's going to be a base map. And it's going to be an ambient occlusion. And in this case, I'm going to see how it goes if I multiply this. So what I can do now is increase the contrast of this and check it out. So I would see that my gray thing is affecting only the things that are coming from above, which would make sense if we were working in a sort of dust layer, right? But I need to break it a bit. So I'm going to break it. To do that, I'm going to bring in a texture map. And this is going to be a library asset. And I'm going to search for imperfections. Oh, I mean smart materials, that's why. Imperfections. And let's try, for instance, uh, these stains. So let's give it a moment to load. OK, it loaded. So now I'm going to say, let's use overlay with this one. So it fills these gaps. And I'm going to project from above with Alt, which means clipping on top of this one. And I'm going to say box projection 0.5. What I want now is a bit more contrast in the texture I loaded. And let's see what happens if I invert it. Hmm, very interesting look here. So let's check the albedo. And of course, this dirt shouldn't be this color. So we are going to add darker color, some dirt here. <clears throat> And also, uh, well, this is pretty rough. So as you can see, uh, if I move the light with a shift button and the right mouse button, you can see how a light affects the different channels. In, 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 in case we you want to see, for instance, what is going on with the metalness, you press 3, and there's the metalness. You press 5, and there's the normal. 
six, the displacement. And this is a roughness, which is in four. So you're able to see that where it's completely white, this is completely rough. And, uh, and where it's black, uh, it's more shiny. So as you can see here, that was black and it's more shiny now. I'm going to turn off some layers here. So Juan, while you work on mm -hmm. that, we had a question, uh, actually a couple. Uh, number one was, are normals created in Mixer or do they need to be brought in on the import? Like when you uh, bring in your low poly and generally speaking, <laughs> uh, speaking as someone who, you know, works with the software quite often, if you're working with a low poly model and you do have normals, you need to bring them in. You're not going to be able to author normal maps in the traditional high to low baking sense in Mixer. However, uh, it will load normal maps that you've provided to it, and you can also create normals on the fly. Um, additionally, we also have a question regarding, um, what was it? How do you figure out which layer to put where? And I think you should probably answer that because you're the one who's showing it off. Yeah, uh, give me a second. Um, I'm going to add uh, Rust. Uh, I, I think the the best solution uh, or the best approach uh, is to start uh, slower than I did <laughs> because I started dropping uh, smart materials so, to, so the live stream doesn't go like for the for a complete day. Uh, but uh, usually when 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 I start things, um, I'm gonna show you right now. Uh, I I'm gonna collapse this. And, and leave it uh, completely without anything, any weathering, anything. I create, I work with solids, um, um, only solids and, and masking. And, and then what you can do is um, you can, um, give me a second, I just need to make sure that everything is off here. Weathering is off, leather is off, head is off. Give me a second. Uh, this is the these are the eyes. I'm going to change them. Well, this is this is important. I, I guess this addresses the question. First thing first, and I, I I'm forgetting about my number one name things. Eyes, because I, I had the name of the of the smart material and I was I was getting kind of lost. So I know now that the eyes are are those, and this guy is completely separated, and that's why I was completely losing it. These are the stains. So. One recommendation would be to name your things while you work. Um, and this is, for instance, we have, this is the pilot chip metal. So this is going to be the head. And I have this rusty metal here, which is interacting now with a, with a normal map and the, and the curvature. So that looks pretty good. But we may change the, the color. Or we may think, okay, this uh, this looks good, but I don't like. Uh, I I want I want to sort of use a part of it, but not everything. So what if we uh, say, for instance, uh, let's multiply it. Of course, it's going to look black, completely black, because the base is black. I'm going to multiply it. Going to look dark, as I said, and then let's change the base color. And let's try something completely weird. Something like this. We can we can keep that. And the stains now, I know where, where they are because I named them, right? And now I can say, hey man, th this could be dust or dirt. That would be nice, right? So what I can do now, look at this mass stack, mass stack that I have here. Let's let's call this an investment. I already made my investment in this in this in this layer, right? But I would like to have a texture there. So I'm gonna go for a surface and let's type in dirt. And what do we have here? Mm, or dust. Dusty concrete, look at this, amazing. Or even this one, metal dust. So look at this, I'm gonna steal from myself. 
<laughs> I just the, the as I said earlier, Mixer is a super masker. So once if you create a mask in Mixer, you will be able to use it in in a, a lot of different ways with the uh, with surfaces, uh, meaning mega scans, uh, scans or solids. In in my case, uh, I was working with a with a with a, this one, which is a solid, which is the easiest and fastest way to test masks. But now I'm going to steal this mask. So I'm going to copy, copy mask stack, and I'm going to paste it here. Paste mask stack. And now I can turn this off. So you can see now that instead of using the solid, I'm using the scan. And now we can check the scan placement. Uh, for instance, if, if these uh, blobs uh, are too big, we can go to the box, uh, to the projection of the scan here and say, OK, I want this to be 0.5. So it rep repeats more. And the tight, and the, the it doesn't show tiles because this is an exaplanar projection. But uh, you can see there that looks great. If I go to 0.2, even better. And as you can see, we've been layering um, things on top of this uh, with uh, some effort. So I don't know if I answered the question. <laughs> I think what you're saying is that a natural progression mimicking how these surfaces work in real life is probably the best way to approach it, such as having a base layer of metal which you would then apply paint to like you would in real life. And then as that surface ages over time, you would see dirt, uh, paint wear, and other uh, imperfections start to accumulate as the uh, surface continues to age. It's probably Absolutely. Way, yeah. Absolutely. You, you remind me something, uh, which is <laughs> super important. Uh, there is a, there, there's channels of people that uh, work with real models, like scale models, tanks and everything. And... Uh, there is one I think it's called Night Shift, um, uh, and I saw the, his videos where he was polishing the the tank and painting the primer with gray, and then uh, applying layers. and And, and I started uh, do, using exactly the same techniques as him, uh, but in Mixer. So finally, I got uh, great results because absolutely it it has to be like that. You have to create. You're, you have to know what uh, the, if there's metal first, is, if there's painting first, later, and then if there, there's dust. So in this case, we have uh, we have a metal, we have some paint, and we have some dust. And and we would like to have the dust covering the the, the eyes of this thing, right? Because the the eyes at this point they are completely clean. So how to do this? I think it's pretty simple. I hope. I think I'm gonna move this up. And now the eyes are covered. So, in a way, I have this urge to clean this thing off so bad. <laughs> Just start making virtual videos of you cleaning, like oh, digitally, okay. dusty okay. items. We cleaned it. <laughs> we cleaned it. Oh, thank okay, you. My, my OCD is fine. Oh, God, no, it's back. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something that you may like. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna make gonna... a a game for you to like methodically. Look at this. This is this is Jonathan cleaning up uh, cleaning up as he progresses. Yeah, it's much better. I like that. Yeah, this this is much better, right? Well, it's good to see that all these different stacks work so well in real time too. I mean, you're working with how many layer sets here, and it's still really fluid. I don't know. I think I have maybe twenty, twenty layers, and we can check how many materials we have in the asset manager. Um, the asset manager is going to open and it's going to show me. Uh, all the assets that I have here. This is a very useful uh, window. So we have uh, this Rust that I'm I'm not sure I'm using now. Uh, you can delete things that you're not using, um, but you have you can check also your 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 imperfections. And if you check the name, he's going to show you where they are. Um, Alt click. I don't remember. I done, never used this, but uh, but you can see everything here. You can see the mat IDs. The, the bakes, uh, the textures, uh, the, the scans, everything. So that window is really, really powerful.
Is there a way to easily group like all the assets or materials or, or textures rather that you're not using and just sort of remove anything unused all at once? Or is it a step-by-step uh, -step process? For now, it's a step-by-step -step process, okay. but yep. I requested that <laughs> I requested that uh, to the devs and I hope they can, they, they can indulge me. Mixer is an ever going work in progress. I'm sure we'll continue updating it. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, so I think the color the color pattern is a bit dull. So, so if if you had have an art director, uh, maybe you want to to maybe he's he wants to change or she wants to change something. I'm the art uh, director. You're going to make it purple. Purple, Roger that. So let's go to the base color. Look at this, man! I made this with the the with a multiply so making it uh, purple i guess it's going to be kind of hard but uh no excuses not. just make it happen i'm gonna make it happen i'm gonna create a solid make it purple darker there you go yeah that's what i want to see all right on this one i want it to i want the metalness not to show i want the roughness not to show and I want the albedo as an overlay. And let's see what happens. Oh, because everything is very dark here. That actually looks really cool in that grayscale style that you had there. Yeah, that, it kind of looks cool. Um, well, it's got hints of purple in it, too. It's not like it's just all gray. Yeah, you're right. You, you can. This is something that I usually do a lot, like working in modes. If you're trying to texture things, um, all the time, like uh, like this, uh, you you sometimes you you get lost because you're seeing the all the channels, metalness, roughness, and color at, at the same time. So sometimes you want to work in albedo mode and say, all right, I'm just concentrating on the color. I want to do something special here. Uh, let's let's see uh, if, if this is multiply. What happens if I change this color and make it more saturated? Uh, so we've got a question coming in. I want to answer real fast if we could. Yes. Um, so we want to know whether the uh, you know whether we're actually looking into adding a painting toolkit to Mixer to improve it further. And while it does have the ability to real time paint right now, we've been investigating what we would think that could make the uh, 3D experience and painting even better. And currently, it's just one of these. It's one of those really big requests, right? We want to continually improve this. Everybody wants us to do it, but right now, to pull it off to the level that we're looking to get it to we need to change our priorities a bit and that might not really benefit you guys in the long term. So we're not really going to focus on painting right now, but we do want to look at it in the future. So uh, keep an eye out. I'm sure we'll address it in future updates. Yes, but you can stamp things. I'm going to just stamp the, the Quixel logo here. Uh, let me see. I'm going to use, I'm using a, a solid with a quick mask. So I guess I'm going to stamp a big Quixel logo here. There you go. And now uh, I can play around with this guy. Um, mm, looking good. This is a Quixel logo. And uh, we have the sunburn on top. So if I want to, I could scratch this guy a bit. So I'm going to paint on top of him with uh, some DK. It's not that I want to touch my beloved Quixel people, but I'm going to scratch. Think about what you're doing here. Oh, oh no, man. Don't, no, no, no. <laughs> Look at this. I made a mistake. I have to use the black value. No, no, don't do it. Oh, it actually looks really good. Yeah, you keep doing that. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, man. All right. I'm going to do something else now. I want to add a gradient to this. So this is the, this is the logo, right? So I'm going to add another color and I'm going to clip this one and this one is going to be this color and this color I hope I can put uh, a position gradient in this one and I'm going to work in mask mode because it helps let's give it a moment and now I know that if I move my ma my gradient down and I stretch it a bit. 
and move it up. Um, my queue was not that big, so I think I, and my gradient should be a bit more, a bit tighter. If I press one, I'm, I'm going to be able to see the result. There you have it. So using clipping masks allow you to create uh, gradients and uh, whatnot. And also we may need or we may, we may want to change the, the appearance of this. So let's say, for instance, that this uh, we don't want this queue to be completely rough. So we want it to be more shiny. Uh, and uh, even uh, more, we want it to be. Let's try to uh, let's try that this is metallic. So I did it on the on the lower layer, right? So instead of doing it on the clipped one, what I can do is just keep keep the color and turn off the the ones that I'm not using. So so with that, I have this sort of metal decal of the queue on top of the model. What do you think? So you can paint uh, some things. Uh, it's it's not the complete focus, uh, but uh, you can you can paint things. You can use the, the procedural masks. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do things. I, I would say that instead of using the paint uh, the add paint layer, uh, I use that a lot uh, until I saw uh, Josh Bauer's video, the last one, where he did exactly this same thing: a mask, a paint painted mask into a solid, and it was like. Man, if I knew that before, uh, I I completely forgot about that, and uh, it saved me uh, a lot of time. And because it's 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 uh, it's uh, l way less resource in intensive. So, any other questions regarding well, the? Now that you have this fine looking Quixel bot, um, they're curious of bringing that back into Unreal Engine. So for some of the folks that may not have seen that previously, how do they make the leap? Well, the leap is, is done um, using the export. Um, I, I think um, that may take a, a little while. So I'm not sure if we should do that. Um, maybe we can try a while. While we answer some other them. questions. Yes, I think so. So I'm going to save the first. I'm going to save the mix. Um, <gasps> Saving the mix. It. Yeah, let's save this one as as. Uh, let's imagine oh. that this is this is. Uh, oh, the purple. I'm sorry, man. But if it but if you had crashed, you would have lost everything. How dare you save? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, one thing that is very nice is that Mixer uh, saves uh, the, the the file. Uh, every time you save the file, it saves once with every asset that you uh, that you included included the custom sources uh, in in a folder. But after that, uh, if you're going to if you're going to save the file again, then it saves uh, all the files again. But if you continue saving without adding things, the, the save is super fast. So uh, I'm not sure that I really like the, the metallic thing. So I'm going to change it a bit. Uh, going to change the base. Let's say that this is not really metallic because the Q was not being so present. <laughs> I so, gotta say, I love this comment I just read that not saving is hardcore mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you either get there, to the end or you don't. Be, being there, done that. <laughs> yeah, so, so oh, I'm yeah. going to save again. And this is, as you can see, is going to be a fast save. And you know, the other thing that may help a bit is that I change the flat background to the gradient or to the skybox because now everybody can see what I did because it, what? What a dull robot! It's it's kind of black, man. Uh, I I I really like to work with colors, but this time um, I had to do it uh, black. He's okay, just low so, key with a pop of color. Yeah. So to export, uh, usually uh, if you're in this is the usual window how, as you as you get it uh, from from Mixer, but uh, in this case, um, what I'm going to do is set this to the library. And the library has already a preset, a preset for um, which is aligned to to Megascans. This is how Megascans works. So this is uh, everything he's going to export. And what I need to do here is uh, Droid demo. 
and I'm going to add a category, and it's going to be droid. And I need to cross my fingers and export to the library. So we may answer some questions while this guy exports, because he's going to export the, make the, the maps, and also he's going to export the geometry. Cool. We actually do have one question. Um, wanted to know if actually I, it just scrolled up and I totally missed it. But the the question was basically, do we have any uh, learning content for Mixer? And we absolutely do. We've we've been making it for well over a year now on the Quixel YouTube channel, which I'm sure will be linked in live chat. It is comprehensive. There's tons of tutorials uh, from different people, from uh, Victor Ullman to uh, Josh Powers to uh, heck, I think there's even something I put up there at one point. So uh, we're always adding more content and always adding more tutorials. And it's definitely something you guys want to keep watch on because we are always adding as much as we can so you guys can get up to speed as quickly as you can. Yeah, one, one of the great things about the tutorials uh, is that they are edited. And uh, so, so all that decision making is, is they are super well scripted. Uh, every time Josh uh, releases a tutorial, I have to congratulate him because it's, it's like a, a, I'm not an expert in Mixer. I, I feel like the more I know, I think that, that the less I know. But uh, uh, with all of his tutorials, I learned something new. Uh, and I watched and one of the things people ask me is, how do you know or how do you, how do you learn? Uh, and I usually learn uh, making mistakes, but also I really love to, to look at basic tutorials, uh, the one to three tutorials. I watch all tutorials. Uh, for instance, to learn ZBrush, I watch the tutorials like how to open a scene, how to... I, I, the, the biggest learning uh, exercise for me is watching basics because uh, when you get sort of used to say, uh, things, you kind of forgot the basics. Something like the Josh was was showing the other day, uh, painting a, a mask on a solid layer is something I, I, I didn't use for a year uh, because I was trying to make things maybe more complicated. So, okay, I think he exported. Let's go to our friend uh, Rich, and here we have the droid. And let's see. Okay, we have the droid, and I'm going to tell him. Would you be so kind to export him to Unreal Engine, please? So I hope Unreal. Multiple meshes. Yes, I want my multiple meshes, sir. And once that gray window opens, it means we're good. And that brings all the materials and everything is connected. Everything is connected. So give it Perfect. three. Two, one, window. And that comes through with <laughs> Three, our, our, our two, bridge plugin, too, if I'm not mistaken. There Say you that go. again. Juan, that, that should come through with our bridge plugin as well, shouldn't it? Uh, droid demo. Yeah. Yeah, the bridge. Oh, man, sorry. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, <laughs> there you have it. Uh, I was dra dragging the folder inside Unreal Engine. So here we have our little pal. Uh, and uh, let's see. I'm going to get closer. And one thing I like to do here is uh, I like to stress a bit more the, the, some materials. For instance, the, the, the metalness. Uh, for instance, I'm going to go in this guy. And in the metallic controls, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to push this further. Save it. And the metalness is coming through better. I'm going to do that again with this other guy. Metalness. While you're doing that, we did go get a question about bringing in, I would assume, material IDs in the mixer. And that's really simple. Uh, you just load up the uh, texture map that you generated for your IDs inside of the, I believe it's the asset import window inside of mixer. It's a, maybe a 10 second process. Should be really easy. Yeah, one thing that is really important, and I made this mistake, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it. Uh, uh, you can, in the setup, uh, name your UDIMs, which is pretty logical. If you are in, in this one, if you are seeing a list, uh, I'm, 
I'm working now in a, in a <laughs> I need to show you these guys. I'm working in this. Um, this is my window where I work uh, developing things. This is like the progress and the notes and everything. Uh, it's pretty massive. And I'm working in, in, in a crocodile now. now. And uh, <laughs> you will see, look at the amount of udims there. It's 18 udims. Good lord. So, yeah, but uh, I know that uh, I can do this. Uh, Mixer can handle this. Um, the thing is, what? which one is what? <laughs> so the thing is, I had to name them. Uh, and it's not an effort. And, and Mixer really helps you with that. Uh, you know, so if you... As a Florida man, seeing a gator makes me smile. Ah, excellent. It's a piece of home. All right. Yes, so yes, it is. In this case, I would name uh, if 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 we're talking about the croc, we will we would name the pieces. But but if you export the udims with the name, um, Bridge will get confused and ex uh, export the textures uh, also with the names, breaking the connection uh, with the U with the virtual textures inside Unreal. So once you ma you're working your, with udims, and if you name things, just make sure that in the setup. You delete this. If I say, for instance, head, and also this one, legs. If I export this, I will break. Uh, I will break the connection. Uh, I I know the devs are are working on this to sort of bypass it because I discovered this like uh, yesterday or, or the day before uh, by accident. So if you name your udims, just delete the names like this before exporting to uh, Bridge. And if you do that, Bridge will do its job perfectly, and it will send your model to Unreal Engine perfectly. Good little so, tidbit there. Yeah. Um, what else? What else, guys? Do, do we have more time? Yeah, so uh, they're wondering, so does Bridge retain all the weight maps and bones? So if they export in... FBX into Mixer, then to Bridge, then to Unreal. Does all that data stay with it? That's a great question. Mixer only works with a uh, with geometry that uh, with geometry. It's not a uh, it's not uh, a rigging. It doesn't have any rig. The character it doesn't have any rig here. But I guess if I rig this guy uh, in, in in for instance in Maya and I export it as a skeletal mesh, I I just can drag the materials on top of him and he will. He will be ready. So, so the thing is, you can use Mixer, and 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 what I'm taking advantage here is the is Bridge creating uh, the the network for me in Unreal Engine. I'm not an expert in in, in Unreal Engine, but the, the the this is the coolest. Uh, if you go into this guy and check his the materials are, are using the Megascans Master Material, which is a beautiful uh, C. Uh, um, Side to see the, all the connections, um, but if I, I bring this guy as an FPX uh, and just drag the materials on top of him, then I will have my skeletal mesh with all the materials uh, already connected. Another thing to mention too on this subject is that Mixer is not exactly a uh, a final destination for these assets that you're going to bring in. It's kind of a waypoint. So if you bring in a, an FBX to Mixer, it doesn't really process that mesh in the sense that it's going to make adjustments to it. You can export that mesh from Mixer, but if you're working with skeletal animations and anything else that you don't want to be broken, it's probably best just to take the original file that you loaded at Mixer to begin with and then put that into Unreal. That way you don't really have to worry about it. All right. Yep. <laughs> I'm uh, opening a new, a new file while... People make questions uh, or ask things. I, I may answer uh, them while doing something else. I'm, I think I'm going to drop some materials on top of this if they have any questions. Let's I think see. we're getting ready to wrap it up, but yeah. Well, they had a couple. So um, I did want to ask, um, they're curious about an artist community around Mixer. So those folks that are generating assets and things out of it. Um, is there a community or a great place for folks that are interested to gather with other, either get inspired by or learn from others? Oh, yeah, community? absolutely. Uh, we have two different places that I recommend going to. First and foremost is the Quixel art community on Facebook. Um, if you're a Facebook member, it's a great place to go. It's an easy place to, to visit. It's just facebook.com slash groups slash Quixel Tools Group. All one word. Drop that link in. 
Mm -hmm. And if you're not a Facebook user, um, you can always visit us on Discord. The link was dropped in chat earlier, but we can always pop it in there again. And Discord's pretty active. There's a work in progress place you can you can chat with, show off your work. Uh, plenty of people will interact with you and help you out. I'm in there every single day chatting with users. So if you guys got stuff to show off, I have eyes to look at it. Awesome. Uh, also, the the I I don't I don't recall that you, you said uh, something about the Facebook community. I guess you did, but I'm I'm a boomer, so I forgot. Uh, <laughs> I did mention it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The the Facebook community is absolutely great. Uh, absolutely great. Uh, every uh, all the time, there's people uh, that want to help you. So even me, if I if I if I'm there and I can help. Uh, I helped a lot of people, even creating scenes or or or, sh or creating videos, especially for them. Um, so this is one of the great things about uh, Quixel. It's it, and this is so, so, a sort of a declaration of love because this company, uh, the, the community, really loves this company, and you you can see uh, uh, how um, loyal the community is with with, with Quixel. Uh, I got I got fascinated with with Quixel when I saw a video of uh, Teddy and Wakar walking around like with a scan or something like that. Like I don't know how many years ago, I got fascinated by them. But the the community is absolutely great. I mean, I'm a little biased because I've been running this community for like six years. But man, you guys are pretty awesome. I, it's it's a real privilege to be able to work with you guys on a daily basis and and see all the stuff you make and. You know, and, and people like you come out of this community, Juan, which is, you know, the fact that you're here having the stream with us shows that we really do care about you guys. And like, please engage, show off the work that you do. We want to see it. Um, don't be, you know, don't be shy. Anytime we can help you out, we totally will. Yeah, and and, uh, and, and post on, on post on social media and in Facebook. Uh, it, it's the best way to get uh, advice. Or if you don't know how to do something, just ask. Uh, we will help you. And we're listening all the time. Jonathan is listening. Even me, I'm, I'm listening. Oh, what a great, great ecosystem, you guys. Well, I said Based it for years before this, but um, Quixel was and still is a company that only succeeds when you guys succeed. So we always want to do our best to make sure that you guys are happy. Love it. Um, let's see. Do we... Do I do a couple? We have a couple of more questions, and maybe we answer them kind of at a high level. Um, so they're wondering: so they work with a lot of terrains, and um, would you recommend using a mixer for like flow map erosion and and things like that? I don't think Mixer is designed for that currently, mm -hmm. but you can make terrains in it. Uh, you've seen some of the work that Juan's created. If you check out mm -hmm. his art station, you'll see full terrains he's built inside of Mixer. Yeah, you awesome. could even use, oh yeah, absolutely. You could even <laughs> use the uh, displacement maps that you kick out of Mixer as a terrain map that you could then load into Unreal. Nice. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. You you can you can create, uh, you can mask things. And you can, as a matter of fact, um, when I was, Doing these terrains and in, in, in creating these terrains in in Unreal, uh, sorry, in in Mixer, I was and in, in reality what I, I was dreaming is like ending uh, with this type of thing inside a Unreal Engine. At that point, I I, I didn't open I I knew anything about Unreal Engine, but I know that I can I I can sort of prototype something without risking too much inside Mixer and then go into Unreal Engine and replicate it and and. Mixer, it's not only a texturing tool, guys. For me, or at least for me, you can see it as a prototyping tool, uh, it, as a creative prototyping tool. You, if you create the, you can create materials, terrains, characters. Uh, it's, I don't know, it 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 makes you happy. <laughs> um, it does everything, man. <laughs> look, look at this. Look at how easy I dropped uh, old crouch leather, old couch leather. Sorry, into my shoe here and uh this is a smart material it landed perfectly if i change the colors and start tweaking it uh and all, or if i want to i can create my own smart material if to do that just right click export as smart material if you if you change it and then you you can duplicate the amount of smart materials you have so comfy <laughs> um 
kind of on a similar note, they're wondering if you have a layer set up, can you save that and then like apply it to another file? So their example um, was they have a bunch of orcs and they want to reskin them slightly differently. And, you know, some have horns, some have scars, et cetera. So could you use that same layer set and uh, uh, apply it? Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I did that with uh, with this guy. Uh, I created for I, I think I started with the feet. I think I started with the with with this part uh, with my my smart material. Uh, and instead of saving the 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 smart material and then bringing it, what I did was I saved the file, for instance, uh, feet, uh, and then I imported a, a different FBX, changed the base maps, and simply allow the system to <laughs> to to uh, allow the stack to work its magic and broom you have it uh, really easy um maybe there are some limitations uh, probably you will lose your your if you painted some masks you you may lose them because they are based on on uvs um but that's how i made this ca complete character out of one piece i created the 30 the 30 mixes so i recycled myself and i cheated uh, and it was easy. You worked efficiently. Yeah, well, I worked. I created. I created. <laughs> I, I would say two smart materials. It was this leather, this sort of I call it battle leather, and it's based on one of the leathers from the library, and this bronze, which is based on on rust or copper thing. Uh, so, if you look at this and, and think, oh, that's awesome. Hey, man, this, what's awesome is in, it, it's already in there, in the library, and it's free. So, come on, guys. Humping. Yeah, it's definitely not cheating to use what exists out there. I mean, any more than it's like cheating to use Photoshop to paint than it is to use like a, you know, canvas and brush or, or if you go back in time and like, you know, it's cheating to use a canvas and brush versus like chalk on a, on a rock wall when we were cavemen, you know? So you Absolutely. use the tools that are available to you. And it's like, if you don't do that, you're going to get left behind in the digital dust. Yeah, and the thing is, the more time you you put on this, the the better you will become. This is exactly as as, as learning to drive a car. First, you are going to be like oh, the car is going to be stopping, uh, and whatnot. But uh, if the the learning uh, zero learning curve is pretty much if you grab a magnifier and go into the into 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 magnifier mode, uh, you will learn, and in the second day you will be be twice or three times as uh, better than you were the first day. And it's that's what why it's so enjoyable, because you really feel that uh, you are uh, learning so fast. Oh, so somebody was asking, you know, you had the rad decal. Can you export those decals as transparent mass textures um, to create a decal material in UE? Yes, yes. There is a there is a way to export uh, to export decals um, to ex export masks. As a matter of fact, so um, let's grab something just for the sake of it. I'm gonna say, for instance, let's say that this is the mask I want to export. Um, if I go to the to the layer, there's a tiny thing called custom export channels here, and if you open it. You can tell him send it to to a custom mask channel export or something like that. So I'm gonna add a channel. I'm gonna say hello and save it. So now this thing is saved, and if I look into the custom export channels, we have him already uh, there being sort of prepared to be launched and to be to export that you need to do that on the on the advanced setup i think there is a tutorial to do that but i think uh, you go in here you add a new one you add a map and uh, let's say that this one is i think it's grayscale and the value is uh, hello and there you go hello and uh, enter. And now he's going to s export the albedo, the RMO, which I already set up normal, and my oh, hello, uh, and my texture. And then I can import that texture and continue texturing. That's exactly how I made the, um, this particular guy. 
this little uh, creature here was textured using uh, was uh, I was testing the the export mask feature, so I created a, um, a file only with masking with special masks. I exported them and then imported them. And and you wonder why did you do that? Because the the, the masks were files, just files. But when where, where they they were procedural, I I would say they're not heavy. But uh, if you're importing a, just an image, it's just an image. It's very easy. So if, if this was a decal or, or whatever, you can do it. And also, you can flatten mixes. I, I, I usually don't do that uh, because that those are the things that I always forget. But you can flatten a mix and, uh, and uh, sort of continue from there. That's completely non-destructive too, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, one of the cool thing is is that uh, it's non-destructive. You can you can go back. You can save versions. If, if even better, you can use the layer sets to save versions. For instance, the the scorpion, the 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 realistic one, and the other one are on the same uh, mix file. Um, if we go to the art station and go to this one, you will see that we have the the clean one, and with, we have the dirty one. And they are on the same mix. Uh, the dirt is just in the different layer set, so I, I just can't export. Can export my dirty one, my clean one, my cyborg one, my cyborg with dirt from one mix. So it makes uh, very efficient to to know exactly where you have your things. You don't get lost. You you're not thinking where the hell did I leave the dirt? No, you have your your complete character inside there. What would you say the advantage is if you're flattening it, if that's totally non-destructible? I feel like a lot of times that's to like get rid of data and streamline that asset. Um, what do you? What are the scenarios in which you feel like it would be adv advantageous to use it versus not? I think uh, that's a very good point. As a matter of fact, one of the good things I uh, one of the things I do in Mixer um, is I sort of microscoped in Mixer. Uh, if you look at the pants of this guy, all these wrinkles are not sculpted in ZBrush. Uh, they are done in Mixer. They are procedural. Uh, I imported, uh, I, I don't know, I, I remember I bought a, uh, an alpha collection made in Marvel's designer, I think. And I imported that as a, that as a procedural, repeated, uh, scattered it, and use it to add detail to the, to the model. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I was afraid of uh, ruining the model inside ZBrush. I didn't want to ruin the model. Uh, like if I add a, a noise or, or I sculpt every detail in the ZBrush, that is destructive. You, you, OK, you will be able to export your normal map, your displacement, and it's going to look great. But what if the art director or someone says, hey, uh, get rid of the wrinkles? It's like, oh. Uh. So um, I use uh, ZBrush until a certain point, And then I know Mixer will cover me. Uh, so I do all the micro sculpting, meaning the, 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 this texture, this uh, hex texture, the repeating patterns, the wrinkles, um, all those, uh, the the damage is all done in Mixer because it's non-procedural. Sorry, it's procedural and it's not destructive. If the art director tells you, "Hey, I, let's drop this," you turn it off. Uh, no, I, I like it back. Turn it on. That it's as simple as that. Awesome. Let's see. I feel like we've gotten, let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody noted that uh, they are asking if you have any tips to work with um, displacement um, or just overall guidance or um, best practices you're willing to share. Um, yeah, well, displacement is embedded in, in, in Mixer. Um, all right, I have displacement here. so. Let me show you just a second. For instance, all these uh, files that, let me filter this to Quixel Mixer. Um, all these files, uh, until this became 3D, were using uh, displacement. So the car, the, the hills, everything was using displacement. So uh, the quality of the displacement uh, mixer export uh, is really good. It, if you use a 32-bit uh, EXR or a 32-bit uh, TIFF, it's going to be great. Um, 
Maybe it's not the best uh, to, to, to use this inside Unreal. I'm not an expert in displacement in Unreal, but uh, if, if you want to use the, the displacement, all these renders have displacement, and, and the displacement, it, if you look at it, it, well, in this case, it's a bit out of focus, but um, it's pretty good. Uh, and and uh, Mixer has an experimental feature, which gives uh, awesome, um, awesome uh, displacement to normals. So uh, I think that uh, if, for instance, if you create a terrain, you shouldn't use the dis load the displacement in the in the displacement. You should use it as a as a solid. I, I think uh, I explained that several times in my in my videos in uh, in the Facebook group. So if you join the Facebook group and and search for the for the uh, tutorials uh, hashtag there, you will find. As you can see, it's going to be me, 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 me doing. Look at it, doing stupid things like creating hard surfaces based on the, on the, on the, on on, on the terrains and and the wrinkleizer. It's uh, the thing I was t telling you about. It's like, hey, I want to create wrinkles, but I don't want to sculpt them. All right, let's bring in some alpha, repeat it, and then it it even moves. Great. So you, you you can find this. Uh, these are a bit old because they are 2019, but they 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 exp they are sort of they are two minute, five minute videos. But you can find a lot of uh, things here that you can learn crazy things. Uh, and the concepts create. and all that will still apply. So yes, yes, absolutely. Because the fundamentals, the, the, yeah. The fundamentals. Mixer has not. Mixer added things has not changed. So. Now it's a 3D painting or a 3D texturing application, but uh, but yeah, you you can export your displacements and you can use them. And there's the experimental feature which will generate normals for you, but it's still experimental. So what I'm else? About that. Um, on a more philosophical standpoint, you know, you have all these beautiful terrains in uh, on your portfolio. Were those inspired by real world landscapes? Is that how you assemble some of them? Do you feel like that's a great place for folks to start, or do you just start throwing stuff together and live your best life? It's it's so funny that that you ask this because uh, some of these images are um, are generated from things that are completely different. Uh, I'm not. I don't remember if I posted the image of this one, but uh, this was a paint uh, it, and a piece of art I found in 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 Pinterest, uh, sort of water watercolor uh, of just watercolor, not of a terrain, a watercolor, mm. and I grabbed that watercolor, converted to sort of converted to thirty two bit, uh, treated it uh, through a um, uh, application that uh, does terrains, and then imported that into Mixer to texture it, and it became sort of Iceland mystery. And, and so I usually, if you want to get inspired, um, you can you can look at completely different things, and you will find uh, something interesting. Uh, I usually look at uh, engineering channels, like <laughs> to to get inspired, um, or or pictures, or I never look at, to get inspiration for this. I'm not looking at art created by created by other people. Uh, because that's already created. So I usually look at nature, uh, look at science, and uh, I don't know, go crazy with things. Uh, <laughs> for instance, this one, the Barnacle Empire, nasty. Uh, but this, <laughs> this this was procedural uh, inside Mixer. So in, if you don't know how to, if you don't have the models, you can still go into Mixer and, 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 and play with it to learn it. And if you want to learn with models, you can use the sample models that are provided uh, by Mixer uh, in the sample mixes folder. And also, if you want to get absolutely great at smart materials and texturing, open each one of the, of the smart materials and look at it. And look at nice. it. Look at look at the look at the layer. Look at this guy. Turn it off. Turn it off. And look. Do check what it's what it does. It it 
that's the time it requires, but the, but the, but you learn so fast with it, uh, and and the interface is so so it's like there. There's there's nothing hidden. So learn from those who have come before you. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. No. Yeah. I think that's great. You know, it's the same reason with Unreal Engine. We apply the like sample projects and the content example um, files. Yeah, dig into those materials and dig into what exists so you can see how people built and there are pieces you can learn from or take away from. Uh, if that setup isn't one-to-one -one for you, then you obviously have the liberty to change it so um, and make it into your own or whatever works for your project. So. Yeah, and since it, it, it's free, uh, there's no excuse to say, hey, I can't learn. No, 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 no. It's free. <laughs> it, it's easy. It's fun. There's resources, there's tutorials. We can help you, guys. <laughs> well, I think on that, um, you know, we've shared some places where you can go get ex uh, inspired and chat with other folks with the communities on Facebook and Discord. We can reshare those links. Um, there's a number of tutorials, uh, primarily on YouTube, right? Uh, mm -hmm. For Quixel. And yep. are there other places you would recommend other resources you want to encourage folks to visit um, as they're going on their mixer journey um i'll just come out and say it i've been working on a write-up tutorial written tutorial in the vein of what i did for quixel suite back a couple of years ago on ArtStation, and i'm hoping uh to have that out sometime in the next month or two so we can have a nice uh written comprehensive how to get from a to b tutorial for people who are used to how the suite works i wouldn't have felt confident announcing it on stream if i hadn't been mostly done with it already so i just got to do the final bits of uh work to it and get it all written down and then we should be good to go well now they'll um, hold you to it so yeah yeah i kind of have my uh, feet on the fire now don't <laughs> i should have got my mouth shut but <laughs> But uh, as uh, Juan so deftly mentioned earlier, uh, deadlines are often the maker of heroes. So. <laughs> there you go. So the write-up coming soon, TM. TM, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you'd like to share, Juan? Oh, um, <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, just the final word, um, the mixer is really easy to learn. Um, you 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 will really enjoy it uh, once you drop a model there and drop some smart materials and start playing with it. Uh, it will it it can it can really change your day. In in my case, when I started three years ago, I I was thinking, I um, I was even sad. Like I, I can't be creative anymore. Uh, there's the people are so uh, they they are so advanced in all this software and and, and I. I have 25 years of, of experience and I, I felt a bit lost until I found Mixer and I stopped, started playing with it. It sort of sparked my, 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 my creativity in, in ways that I can't even explain. Uh, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thank, uh, thankful to, for, to, to Quixel and to Teddy, which, which has been very en encouraging all the time. If, if the CEO of the company at that time tells you a comment, you feel like a million dollars. Uh, so this is, it's a great community, guys. Uh, I really invite you uh, because this community is full of love for art and people. Love it. That is a wonderful note to be to end on. Um, we want to, again, say thank you so much for everybody that came by the stream today. This will be available as a VOD on YouTube after the fact. So if there are parts you want to really dig into or see what Juan was up to, that will be available to you. Um, we have our weekly survey. So if you have thoughts on today's stream or you'd like to give us feedback or future streams, um, suggestions, feel free to drop it in there. and. As always, stay connected with all of us, either in the forums, on social media, uh, any of number of our other official channels, and uh, I, we will see you all next week. Thanks again to Jonathan and Juan for hanging out with us. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. See y'all.